Hi. Hi. I can do a great interview and charge my phone at the same time. Efficiency, right? Maybe. Hello and welcome to Ask the Accountant. Here we are again doing the Pit Stop podcast here at Accountex North. And we've got a bit of a legend with us now. <laughs> Mr. Phil Hoban, yourself, how are you? I am very, very well, sir. Um, yes, it's good to be here, right? Like, it's good to be here at Accountex and chatting to you, as always. Yeah, always a pleasure. So, first of all, for those few people out there, they don't know who you are, they don't know who you, what you do, introduce yourself. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm Phil Hobden. I've been around in the accounting tech space for probably about 10 years now. Started my career off at Futurely, um, and I've been at a couple of different businesses along the way. Um, I work predominantly on the sales leadership and, and, and strategy side. Uh, and I'm also, like yourself, a serial podcaster. So I'm a big fan of podcasts as a medium and, and create podcasts. So I've got a couple of podcasts I've done in the accounting space and a couple of podcasts that I've done outside the accounting space. So yeah, I'm a bit of a kind of an all-rounder, but I think I'm best known for being at the opening of pretty much any envelope in the accounting tech space. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the guy you need to go. If you can't get the guy, I'll, I'll open it with no pride whatsoever. I'm third <laughs> on your list. That's fine. I'll be there. Brilliant. Okay. So... Why Accountex North? Uh, do you know, I was at the very first Accountex North uh, when it was at a different venue and they were still serving food in the middle. It was a bit quirky back then. And I really liked it as an event. I liked it because looking at it, it had a different audience to Accountex. You look at the two lists of people you get, and yeah, of course, there's some crossover, there always is. But it was appealing to a different audience. And actually, as a vendor, that's important, right? Because you don't want to put all your money on one place and one group yep. of people. So also, being really honest, the first time I came to Accountex North, I signed up um, a huge deal for a massive accountancy firm off the back of that one event. And it paid for that event 10 times over. Wow. So you look at it and go, well, actually, I'd already proven the ROI on that first event. And then, of course, you get like the, 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 the event post-COVID and um, I think there's one other and then this year. And it's just, it's just an event that seems to be going from strength to strength. And you look around at the 2023 edition and it feels busier there feels to be like more people here every talk has been jam-packed yeah and i don't think i've ever seen that an event like this every talk but has been busy everyone's been saying all the exhibitors have been saying yeah it's been good it's been good which great but every talk as you say every talk standing room only yeah and, and let's be honest right normally that that is reserved for Rebecca Bennyworth, yep. and HMRC, yep. you know, uh, the Will Farnells of the world. They always get standing room only. Yep. I did a, I had a good panel and I had really good guests on it, but we were proper standing room only as well. And you look at that and go, yeah, people are really engaged with the content. And I guess credit to the Accountex team, they've put together a program that people really want to engage yep. with. Definitely. So what is it? That's different about this. So you say there's a different audience here. Yeah. Is that geographical just because North don't like going South and South don't like going North? Or is it people have got different... These people that come here are more education focused and that's why the sessions are so well populated versus going to exhibitors. Whereas Accountants London, people are spending more time going to exhibitors and less time at sessions. What do you think it is? It's a really... I think there is a bit of a North-South divide. I think there is a degree of of people in Newcastle and Northern Ireland and places like that are like, well, actually, do I want to travel to London to go to Excel? Which, let's be honest, is not an easy part of London to get to if you don't know where you're going. Yep. Um, Manchester Central is pretty central, central right? <laughs> Both in name and location. Um, so I think there's a degree of that. Um, I think from the conversations we've had, there seems to be a bit more of a a savvy audience here. So less people early on in their career or tech journey, more people that have kind of got over that initial hurdle. And again, that's that tallies with that education focus. Yep. They want to learn more, learn the trends, learn what's going on. So I think it's a bit of a mix, right? But I just think generally, it's like anything. If you're always relying on London to be the centre of the world and centre of the universe, there are people that just won't go to London. Yep. But if you're using Manchester in a similar way, that's good. The other thing I like about this event, if you look round, there's no... Hmm, how can I put this politely on the podcast? It's Accountex Manchester is a great equaliser. They yes. build the stands. Yes. 
They're all of relatively equal size. Yes. yes. There's no waving of it's a It's a more level here. playing field. We're not yeah. waving a checkbook. That yeah. Look at the half a million I've just dropped on this stand that we're never going to get a return on investment in anyway. Yeah. I would like to see all events like this, yeah. right? Controversially, would Accountix be worse, Accountix in London, would it be worse if it was stands and designs and similar to this? And I don't think it would. I think what it would be, it would be more sustainable. Yeah. And there'd be less people chucking X amount of hundreds and tens and millions and whatever on, like you say, stuff that ultimately Can only isn't be sustainable, yeah. right? That is, and I mean sustainable both in terms of the business because, you know, every, not every business, but almost every business here has investors in some way or another, and they need to get an ROI. And to do that, they spend more and more and more and more and more. And that only becomes sustainable to a point, right? Yep. And then from sustainable from the other perspective of actually sustainable, you're not just building stuff that then just gets chucked in a skip afterwards. I'm looking around and a lot of this seems like it's frames that you stick stuff to, yep. take the stuff off, frames go away for another Certain time. level of recyclability yeah. there, definitely. Okay, when you know you're coming up to these things, what's the thing you're looking forward to the most? Uh, people. Always the people, right? It's always connecting with accountants, fellow vendors, leaders, influencers, whatever it is in this space. It's being able to spend time with them. Brilliant. So the events are always great and I always love coming here. But what I like here is I get to running to have a conversation with you and then I'm talking to Will Farnell or Glenn from ACC or whoever. And it's a great place to get people together, catch up. And then you've got like the social element around it as well, which is nice. Yeah. And Accountex Manchester has grown a social element. The first few years, it wasn't there. This year, it's like we had the Account Axe darts. Yeah. Account Axe darts. Um, you know, everyone was going to the Albert Schloss after that and and so on and so on and so on, right? So it's, it's that thing where it feels a bit more of a all-round event and that's exciting because, again, I get I can introduce people and say, hey, look, do you know this person? Yeah. And I get introduced to new people. So I think the social element, and because it's not a Countex size, London, because it is a bit more, um, it's a bit more kind of, small is not the right word, but compact. Yeah. It feels a lot easier to navigate around and get to see a lot more people make those connections and strengthen those connections. Yeah. That's always my, my favourite bit at any part of any event. Brilliant. Never okay. the coffee, though. No, it's, it's always awful. Oh. Actually, to and be fair, the it's the queue here. for it. Oh, yeah, And then you get someone like me that's buying, like, for our stand, where I literally yeah. buy 15. That's why there's a queue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I have to say, fair dues, the coffee here is proper coffee. Yeah. They're actually making proper coffee. That's a good so. start. Cool. Okay. How do you take action from events like this? Like a lot of people come to these things, go home, and they'll never come again. They say, oh, it's a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. But actually, it's not a waste of time if you actually action things and you take away things. So what, what are your top tips? Yeah, that's a really, really good question because it's, it's an absolute waste of time if you all you come for is swag, right? If you yeah. come here just to walk away with a load of swag, I don't think anyone gets anything out of that. Us as the vendors don't. Yeah. You as an accountant doesn't. It's just, it's such a, it's such a kind of uh, loveless marriage of a, of a purpose to come yeah. to an event. Why are you going, I'm going to get swag. Uh, okay. Uh, swag's fun and great, but it should be, it shouldn't be what it's become where it's a grab everything you can, mad, like Black Friday sales. Yeah. Rush. I saw someone at, at the main account walking out with seven bags full of stuff. And I'm like, I will never give that give swag to people that just didn't do that because it's just there's no there's no return so for me i think you have to come with a clear set of goals what do i want to get out of it if you want to get out of it, education make sure you go to all the sessions you need to get out of it and make a list of action points for me and if the session's good and if the people on the panel or the talk are good they'll give you or encourage you oh, it's things to take away so the social media panel i did with stuart Francesca, Rachel, and Ashley. Great lineup. I, it wasn't bad, was it? I always say, right, like if you if you get a really good selection of guests, then like they will bring the audience, and then then it, everyone looks good because of it. And like, they're yep. a great selection of guests. But what we did is we were like, the panel was about building business through social media. So the first thing to do for that is actually do something on social media. Yep. So we got everyone to get their phones out, 
take a photograph of us on stage and we waved and everything, and then post it with a comment, tag us, done. So you've now made your first step towards making that yep. social media post. So we gave them an action and a way to do it. Every panel should, every conversation should have an action, right? So you need to make a list of what's important, what you want to do, what you want to get out of it. Make sure you achieve that. Make sure you take action points away from each talk. Bring a notebook, make notes. And then, and if there's a bit of software you like, fantastic. Don't demo it on the day. Yeah. Don't sit there for an hour and demo software because you're not going to remember any of it the next morning. Book a meeting, post the event, and do it then. Have a conversation. Go, hey, look, this could be interesting for us. Let's book it afterwards. Yeah. As a vendor, I appreciate that more as well because I it, it helps me manage my time better and I can do 50 small demos and then all the people that are really interested. And I think the last thing for me is don't be afraid to say no. Yeah. There's so many people that think because someone demoed to you on a stand or gave you a bit of swag or spoke to you that you have to go, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do the demo. And then you don't. And uh, Actually, do you know what? If it's not suitable for you... Just say, because no one wants to waste their time. No, and it's that honest relationship. So the whole thing should be an honest relationship from the reason you're there to, to, to everything else. So, you know, I think if you do all of that, then you can get some really actionable things to take away. If you don't and you're just here for a jolly, that's okay as well. But then don't blame the event. But then don't, exactly that. Don't blame the event and go, what did you get out of it? Well, nothing. What did you go in with? Yeah. What did you, what do you plan to get out of it? And if the answer was you didn't go in with anything, you didn't plan anything, well, guess what? You're not going to get anything out of something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we've, sp we've spoke about swag a few times. <laughs> Have you seen any particularly amazing swag here? Do you know what? I actually haven't. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm not walking around looking for it or if it's because, and I've had this conversation with a lot of vendors, a lot of vendors are actually going, okay, let's turn it back a little bit. So I'm seeing more eco stuff, which is great. Definitely. I actually, do you know what? I actually think the best bit of swag I've seen for the entire account, and this isn't blowing smoke up your, your, your wazoo here, but your top trumps, are the thing that everyone's talking about, right? Good. <laughs> and, but, but that's the thing, right? It's not something that I can use, but it's something fun. Yeah. It's something that's memorable, right? Something that, like, for those of us that didn't make it on the top trumps, get FOMO. Yeah. And I'm like, right, well, how can I get on that? Because I want to be on that next time. So I think that's, it's stuff like that. But there's certainly more of a trend towards eco stuff. Yeah. And again, that's good. I'm no, like, eco um, tree hugger, but I think... If you look at the amount of waste events like this produce... We have to be sustainable. We do. As in it, look, there's a whole push in the accounting industry about ESG and sustainability and, yeah. and everything else. And that has to start with, with vendors and events and, and being responsible and actually asking yourself, do I need that 12th water bottle? Yeah. And sometimes the answer is, do you know what? I don't. Yeah. I, I mean, if you have a kid like I do who goes for a water bottle every week... I, I was saying earlier on another episode, like, I never use water bottles. I never use them at all. I, I was brought up in my house. You want water, you get a glass and you put water in it. Yeah, you yeah. wash up the glass sometimes. <laughs> if you want water at the bed time, you have a, gla you have a glass on the side of yeah. the bed. My wife always has water bottles. Everywhere you go, she's got a water bottle. And I now have a water bottle. Like, I've now got that many bleeding water bottles. I've got one in every room and yeah. enough backups in the cupboard to last me a lifetime. Yeah. But I don't want to throw them away because that's just wasteful. Yeah. I, I tend to find, I just give them to my daughter. She'll, she'll take them to school. They'll look pristine for a day and then they'll come back looking like they've been in some kind of conflict. <laughs> Gravel like, rash. Yeah, yeah, literally. Every, you're like, like, how did that turn into that in a day? And she's like, well, someone threw it. And I'm like, There's some big money being spent on these water. Like QuickBooks have been using their Yeti water bottles. I had to look at these, right? 60 quid ago. That's before you brand them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Do you know, funny enough, you say that. I worked briefly for Intuit and we also had that kind of water bottle and they are phenomenal, but oh my God, like they are like proper. They're like the gold standard. Oh yeah. Water bottles. I'm scared to use it. It's on, it's on display on my shelf. <laughs> well, without being, without being controversial here, my favorite bit of swag ever um, is a water bottle actually. And it's one from ZeroCon 2000 and mm, maybe 19. And it was a glass water bottle in a black kind of sheath that, that's non-slick. Right. And with a bamboo lid. 
And I've, I use that water bottle almost every day. Wow. And like, so that's lasted four years. It still looks almost as good today as it did on that day. And that was a deliberate decision by Gary and, and the Zero team to make more sustainable merch. Yeah. I think that's an important thing. It is. I, I think it's so important. It's so important that we're more responsible as, a, as an industry, as, as everything, because ultimately the carbon footprint of these events with travel and everything else is big. Yeah. And that's why I think it's even more important to make something worthwhile yeah. to be part of it and not just do it because you want a day out of the office. If you want a day out of the office, go go karting. Yeah. Go and like I always use Ferris Bueller's day off as a perfect example for this, right? If you're gonna take a day out of the office, go steal a Ferrari, drive it through Chicago, sing on a parade float, and then watch your best friend have a meltdown and crash the Ferrari out the window. That's that's how you have a day off, yeah. right? Don't have a day off and come to an accounting conference. Yeah. That seems mad to me. Yeah. Okay, so some quick fire questions, okay? What do you love most about the industry? I think I'll go back to the people, right? Like there are some of the most fascinating and exciting and interesting people and developments. It's just an industry that is never the same. Yeah. What would you change about the industry? I think that we have to respect the fact that it's not just about spending money. So spending money doesn't make a better product. And I mean that by in terms of how we market it and yeah, market yeah. it. Spending money doesn't make something like what makes what makes something better is the team and the people. And and that's where the best technology succeeds in this space, where they're people focused. Yeah. They might have a small stand, but behind them they've got an incredible team that look after their the, the customers yeah. to help you as an accountant look after your clients better. So I want to see more of that. And that goes back to my point about Accountex, right? Like, let's have more shows where people can't just spend a bazillion pounds. And actually, then maybe we can focus more on what's important. So what you're saying is we need to bring in the uh, F1 spend cap. I, do you know what? For I, each team. Yeah, I think that's not a bad plan. Because they, I think we, what, we've, what we've seen in F1 recently, right, is the spend caps work. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, everyone's like, well, Red Bull's running away with it. Okay, they are. But underneath Red Bull, I've never seen a season as close as this. No. And that's what this feels like a little bit. It feels a little bit like the spin caps here. And it's really nice to walk around and, yeah. and see people be creative. Yeah. Rather than just spend money. Yeah. No, I love it. Okay. Walter's Claw. What's your ideal client? I've just been shot in the back. No, it's Bloom. <laughs> Bloom behind us, don't worry. I say. Woo! I've been doing it all day. Blimey. I'm getting, I'm getting a bit older now. I mean, what was worse was last night while we were setting all this up, one popped. Well, there's the police tactical unit behind us <laughs> checking fire extinguishers. They think someone's been shot and the Sparky is walking around thinking he's just popped something in the fuse board. Fantastic. Oh. Uh, sorry, what was the question? What's the again? ideal client for Walter Kalur? So ideal client for me, and I think ideal client for anyone in this industry is someone that, that wants to work who wants to invest for the right reason and that ultimately is to solve a problem their customer has right yep. if you are to, if you have defined your client's problem and we can support you in doing that and you have a clear vision of what you're trying to achieve the my ideal customer in any industry be it Wolf's Clue or any other business that I've worked for is not someone that just wants a deal yeah right if you want a deal I, I get you have to be price sensitive and I get we're in a price sensitive market but at the same point, and I think this is really, really key to say, sometimes you get what you pay for, yep. right? And my question is when someone comes up to me and says, can I have a discount? I'm like, yeah, you can. What part of the service do you not want? Yep. Which is what we're all told as accountants to start doing as well. Yeah. And I, I completely agree. What, do you not want the access to me and expert advice? Do you not want this part? So, so for me, it's someone that actually wants to implement the software for the right reason, not yep. because they've fallen out of a price with someone because if it's a price thing, you're never going to be truly happy. Yeah. So probably that for me. What's the item at the top of your tech stack of stuff that you're using day in, day out to achieve your work? Ooh, um, that's a very good question. Probably the top of my tech stack is always my phone, which is really boring, but it is such- Any a particular apps? 
the the built-in Apple apps on the Apple ecosystem are phenomenal. So I use GarageBand for podcasts. Okay. I use iMovie for video editing. Yeah. I use them on my phone as well and on my iPad. And I think like that enables me to every single moment I'm walking around, I've got a studio in my pocket. Yep. I've always got something I like even for so I can do a whole event with a little clip on microphone. But at home, probably the thing I use more than ever is a, is a good podcast mic. Yeah. Like, like that's good for webinars. It's good for podcasting. It's good for whatever you're doing. I think a good microphone is is critical because, yeah, I think a good microphone. So probably my my little Blue Yeti Nano. Is fantastic a, bit of kit. Oh, they they're fantastic yeah. mics. They they really are just like you know really good. So probably that, and then my iPhone. But Great. I think actually you know, gone are the days where you need a, a mountain of technology to do anything these days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, simple as that, really. How do you feel about AI? Oh, I love AI. I love AI for three reasons. One, because it's not going to replace people. Completely agree. It's not going to take, it's not going to, people are not going to lose, accountants are not going to lose their jobs because of AI. What they're going to lose are all the things they don't like doing in their jobs yep. to free up what is really important, which is the conversation. So I love AI. I think AI is potentially a really strong tool. So that's probably rule number one. Two, it makes my life easier on a daily basis. If I'm if I'm if I need to think of 10 topics for posts for LinkedIn, I'll broadly put something in into chat GPT and it'll come up with some ideas for posts and I'll go, cool, that's done the first bit for me. I'm dyslexic. Started that, yeah, it started that learn that thinking, that planning yeah. idea. Yeah. And I'm dyslexic as well. So I will put posts into chat GPT and ask them just to rewrite them yeah. to check the grammar and spelling. Yeah. So it's like having it's like having someone that can help me. For, so it's helped me for that. And probably the third reason, because it's innovation, right? Like it can do so much. And everyone said the same about the internet. Oh, the internet's going to take away my job. The internet's going to yeah. take away my day. It never did. Do you know what people said the same about about um, video? When video came along, yep. oh, it's going to kill the film industry. It actually made the film industry. Yep. Radio was going to get killed by, because and so on and so on yeah. and so on. There's always something going to get killed by something, and yeah. it never happens. What you have to do is you have to embrace the technology, yeah. implement it in the correct way in the where you're working, and guess what? It will be a tool that will enhance what you do. Now, one caveat on that, if one day a robot looking like Arnie turns up at my door and throws me through a window... I might be having a rethink of AI. Point three might not be so valid. <laughs> yeah, point three might not be so valid if like, hello, I am the accounting terminator. Brilliant. Then, yeah, out the window. But yeah, I think, I think AI is positive and I think we need to stop fighting against innovation. Brilliant. So, 30 seconds. You've got a camera there with a red light. You've got a camera there with a red light and you've got a camera next to Lizzie. Choose whichever one you want. Plug whatever you like. 30 seconds to you. Okay, so in October, I will be launching uh, my own podcast in the accounting tech space. The podcast is called The Story Of, and each episode I will be interviewing a fantastic guest to talk about the story of either them, their business, their product, or the company they work for. The first season has some fantastic guests lined up, uh, including your very good including me. self. Funny that. Um, Will Farnell, Lucy Cohen, Rachel Harris, and a load of amazing people. So, Go on to whichever podcast provider you listen to, be it Spotify or anything else. Search the story of podcast. Look for me and you'll find it. And hopefully, hopefully you'll like it enough to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Phil. Thank you for joining us on the Ask the Accountant podcast pit stop at Accountex North 2023. We're looking forward to being here again next year and hopefully having another chat with you. And thank you very much for listening and tuning in to this episode. There'll be plenty more episodes to come, so keep watching for the new updates.